good evening friends um, i believe that today's subject is supposed to be a very important subject not only for msme but for everybody who is into the exports and he wants to start export because the kind of dignitaries we have on the dais i think uh, you won't find any other person who can guide us or who can advise us or who can discuss with us about the issues and challenges today we have mr lokesh hd the dgft we have dr viran chisha the national president of indian drug and manufacturing association we have mr sudhakaran nayar he is a deputy director of engineering senior deputy director engineering expo uh, export Pri promotional council we have the great manish vikiri who is a leading person so far as the chemical and dye stuff is concerned we have with us the jigar bhai soni who is the president of gems and jewelry association and also the director of nns jewels and above all my dear friend mohal sara bhai who is going to moderate today's session and the members of governing council and also mr unmesh dikshit the executive director amdavad management association dear friends it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you all to the eighth sme series where we gather to explore an essential and very important topic export opportunities for msmes breaking into the international markets because everybody knows it is very difficult for msme to start exports to know about the export to find out the various compliances required for exports so that is i mean not only for this series even ama is constantly organizing various seminars for msme and for the students to know much about the exports dear friends it is my pleasure to welcome you all and also this as a promoter of the of the dr jaimin wasa ama msme development center i am thrilled to see the many enthusiastic personalities here today united by a common goal to empower our micro small and medium enterprises to thrive on to the global stage it's indeed a touching coincidence we are i will be putting one thing is coincidence that tomorrow is gandhi jayanti a day that we celebrate birth anniversary of mahatma gandhi ji our father of nation who values he has started that value and the moment of self reliance and support for local goods today's panel discussion on export opportunities for msme that is into the breaking into the international markets aligns beautifully with the gandhi ji's vision by exploring how local business can expand globally we honor his legacy while promoting the sustainable growth the concept of swadeshi was adopted by mahatma gandhi ji incorporating his efforts to make in india what we are talking about today make in india it was started all the way by sri gandhi ji or uh, make in india independent and economically sound revival of the indigenous cottage and small industry which today we are telling it sme cottage and small industry play a very vital role in the development of a nation and it is relevant it in present day too gandhi ji believed in swadeshi in the true sense therefore his ideology reflects encouraging and reviving of home industries excuse me please he even treated these small industries as the backbone of indian villages thus once he said that without cottage and small industry means without sme india could never propose of give jobs to all the people we really appreciate his vision for the growth and sustainability of india which is 
today becoming very important and very much true. Dear friends, as you know that MSME are the backbone of developing economics as they are playing a very vital role in driving e economic activity and employment generation and SMEs represent bulk of production in manufacturing and even larger share in services, both in development and developing countries. As for the figures, if we go, SMEs, con MSME contributes over 33% of the GDP and 50% of the export of the nation and over 65% of total employment in high income industry countries. There are reports that suggest a contribution of $1 trillion US to India's total exports by 2028, highlighting the immense influence of SMEs in shaping India's future economic trajectory. Let us use this opportunity to reflect on how we all MSMEs can uplift our communities while embracing the international opportunities. Dear friends, in today's interconnected world, the potential for MSMEs to access the international market is greater than ever. You can find out any information about exports, products, manufacturing activity, and the globalization of trade has opened up a wealth of opportunities, yet it also having many, many challenges that require innovative strategies and insights for which we will have a lot of inputs and insights by our experts. In an, in an international trade, the contribution of SMEs to direct export revenues is less obvious and varies greatly. Even among OPED, OPCD, that is Organization for Economic Cooperation Development Economies, for example, SME contribute a substantial share of East Asian manufacturing export, such as 56% in Taiwan province of China, over 40% in China and, in, and the Republic of Korea and more than 31% in India. Whereas their role is marginal in LDC, means least developed countries, especially in Africa, with the little documented transborder and sub-regional trade. Further, it's a known fact that Indian manufacturing is depending on supplies of RM from other countries, raw material, especially from China, which includes a wide variety of machineries, including electrical machinery, semiconductor driven machinery, even pharma industries, pharma intermediates, so, and pharma APIs. If we look at limited value consumer goods flooded in bulk quantities in the India, Indian market from outside. Dear friends, according to the Global Trade Research Initiative, GTRI, India had a trade deficit with 75 countries, which accounted for, for our, our expert DGFT will always agree with that, which accounted, resulting in the, which accounted 44.2% of its export and 83.5% of imports, resulting in a 185.4 billion US dollar deficit, much larger than India's overall trade deficit. Adding this situation highlights the need of reduce the dependence on the outside countries on a specific imports and strengthen the domestic production. The report said that from January to June 2024, sir, January to June 2024, India imported 50.6 billion US dollar worth goods from China and exported to China only 8.5 US billion dollar, resulting in a trade deficit of 41.9 US dollar, uh, US dollar, billion US dollar, and this low export and high import makes China India's largest trade deficit partner. Currently, less than one percentage, very important figure is, less than one percentage of Indian SME exports the goods and services. 
with nearly 64 percent reporting an annual turnover of less than rupees 1 CR. MSME exporters primarily cater through the buying agent distributors. In the process, they miss out on connecting with the end users and sacrificing a large share of their margin and earning for the foreign intermediaries. The success recipe requires selecting the most appropriate entry mode from various exporting, contracting and investing options. Dear friends, export activities offer several key benefits for MSMEs like increased revenue opportunities, economies of scale, access to the new customers, diversification of risk, innovation and improvement of quality and introducing new products, learning and development and also brand strengthening, talent acquisition, access to resources, cont contribution to economic growth, which will significantly enhance the growth and sustainability of MSMEs contributing to economic development. By leveraging these benefits, MSMEs can not only grow their business but also contribute to the overall economic development. All these issues will be discussed in this panel discussion by our experts. Dear friends, I'll brief you some of the major issues and challenges for MSMEs, which also we want the answers from our experts to enter the international markets and blocking the export opportunities. Challenges faced by the MSME when engaging in export activities are limited access of finance, lack of market knowledge, regulatory hurdles, weak branding and visibility, logistic and supply chain issues, language barriers, limited export experience, intellectual property concerns, competition from the established and big players, and risk management, etc. Addressing this challenge typically require targeted support from governments, industry association, and financial institution to enhance MSME's capacity for international trade, which is in today's era absolutely important and necessary. It is true that several exporters hardly utilize the Indian embassy's commercial wings to identify the su suitable overseas channel partners. Also, promotion and marketing channels need an adoption for the choose market. Today, we are honored to host the distinguished expert panelists who will share their invaluable insights and experience on this critical topic and they will guide us, they will advise us and they will make us encourage for more and more exports. Join us as we uncover the vast opportunities that exporting can offer to MSMEs and learn how to navigate this exciting journey successfully. Through this seminar, we aim to empower many MSMEs to begin exporting their goods and those MSMEs that are already engaged in export, they will be able to explore more effective strategies to increase their export activities. Together, we can unlock new opportunities and drive growth in international market. Let me introduce our experts, Mr. Lokesh, HD, Additional DGFT, that is Director General of Foreign Trade. Mr. Lokesh is Indian Trade Service 2006 batch. He has done his Masters in Physics from Bangalore University and LLB from Mumbai University. Director General of Foreign Trade DGFT organization is an attached office of the Ministry of Commerce and Industry and is headed by Director General of Foreign Trade right from his inception since 1999, he, he in the, sorry, 1991, when liberalization in the economic policies of the government took place, this organization has been essentially involved in the regulation and promotion of foreign trade through regulation, keeping in line with the liberalization and globalization and the overall objective of increasing exports, DGFT has since begun assigned the role of facilitator. The shift was from prohibition and control of imports, exports to promotion and facilitation 
of exports and imports, keeping in view the interest of the country. I will just welcome on your behalf to Mr. Lokesh. Our second, next expert is Dr. Vidan Chisha. Probably, I we have to find a person in pharma industry who doesn't know Dr. Vidan Chisha. Mm, he's a PhD holder, is a chairman of Saga Life Sciences Limited, and Dr. Shah is a national president of Indian Drug Management Association. He is also associated with many other leading pharmaceutical organizations. IDMA, India Drug Management Association, has successfully completed 60 glorious years of providing support to its members, that is the pharmaceutical manufacturers, who have provided affordable quality medicine not only to the people of India, but also to people all over the world. IDMA also works towards the harmonization of the various pharmacopoeias. Dr. Shah delivered keynote speech at 100 plus national events and he had published around 15 plus 15 plus research publication in various national and international journals. Also, Dr. Viranchi received over 20 national awards and rec recognition like GP Nair Award, B.V. Patel Gold Medal and Bansilal Hargoindas Gold Medal, Pharma Ratan 2018, etc. Friends, again, it doesn't end here. I would like to take this opportunity to extend, and I also would like everybody to applaud in large, a congratulation to Dr. Vinan Chisha. Please join me giving him a big round of applause for his valuable insights and participation in the Forbes India 2024 magazine's healthcare conversation. I would like to felicitate him on our behalf. Dr. Sudhakaran Nair, very active personality. I've always found him running around in here. Senior Deputy Director holds a master degree in economics and has been working with EPC India since last 13 years. Mr. Nair is closely associated with various export <coughs> promotion council activity undertaken by the council of and looks after all the activity of EPC India, sub-regional office, Ahmedabad. Mr. Nair has good exposure in a various activities like mobilization for membership and overseas exhibition, organizing seminars and interactions with the officials of various government departments, associations, chamber of commerce. Mr. Nair has also visited various countries like China, Poland, Malaysia, Nigeria, South Africa, Kenya, Bangladesh, Jordan for various promotional activities. I would request my friend and our moderator, Mohal Bhai, to felicitate Mr. Sudhakaran Nair. Mr. Manish Kiri, one of the very enterprising entrepreneur and chairman and managing director of Kiri Industry. Mr. Kiri has a bachelor's degree of in engineering, electronics and communication and a master's degree in business management and Kiri Industries Limited, which is called KIL, kill. He kills each and every of his competitors. That is why he's called KIL, kill is one of the largest manufacturers and exporters of wide range of dyes, intermediate and chemicals from India. One very important point is in the year 2010, Kiri Industries Limited acquired world's largest colorant company of Germany, Dystar Group, through SPV Kiri Holding Singapore Private Limited, which is now Dystar called Dystar Global Holding Singapore 
PLE Limited. In the 25 years of its corporate journey, KIL has focused on providing sustainable high quality products. All initiatives taken by KIL have enabled it to set its footprint in over 50 countries across seven continents. Kiri Group has embarked upon to set up copper smelter and fertilizer group complex in Gujarat. Kiri Industry Limited is a winner of several KMXC awards, GDMA performance awards over the years and Mr. Manish Kiri is awarded very important thing is the outstanding entrepreneur by Ahmedabad Management Association in the year 2011. He is also chairman of SOCHEM, Gujarat's Chemical Petrochemicals Committee. I request our friend Mr. Mohalvey to felicitate Mr. Manish Kiri. Last but not least, Jigarvi Soni is a president of Jewelers Association Ahmedabad and proprietor of NS Jewels. NS Jewels from the group of SNS Soni Navinchandra Santilal Parivar Group from Unja, Gujarat, established in the year 1972 as a jewelry manufacturer in Ratanpur, Ahmedabad, the third generation of the family enhancing the success through NS Jewels is working to touch a new horizons. NS Jewels is the manufacturer, wholesaler, retailer, and exporter of all types of Indian jewelry. And NS Jewels has been a premium name in the jewelry, wholesale, and retail industry. He just said me his secret. Whatever I presume or intuit for the price rise, it happens. So I, he has become my very good friend now. I will also <laughs> consult him. So I would like to felicitate Jigarwe. Now let me introduce our expert moderator, Mohal Bhai, who is one of the expert in today's topic. Mr. Mohal Sarabhai is an entrepreneur with a passion of bringing new and innovative technologies into India. He has spent the bulk of his career incorporating exciting and new ventures in the Ambalal Sarabhai Enterprise Private Limited portfolio, which have been largely responsible for turning around this legacy company. Mr. Mohal worked for a brief time in the USA after coming a degree Taking, uh, after earning a degree in mechanical engineering from the University of Wisconsin Madison before seizing the opportunity to help revive his company's legacy. He is currently pursuing new projects in the areas of pharmaceutical, effervescent products solutions, fermentation technologies, molecular diagnosis, and electronics. And Mohan Sarape is the managing director of Ambalal Sarabhi Enterprise Private Limited and co-director of pharmaceutical companies Essence in INC USA and Essence Pharma Private Limited, Synbiotics Limited, Sarabhi Chemicals and Vavantis Laboratory Private Limited as well as the molecular diagnostic company Kosara Diagnosis Private Limited and the electronics company Systronics India Limited. Very well, very well. You give him big hands. I would like to felicitate Mohal Bhai on our behalf. <laughs> Friends, these experts, panelists, and moderators will provide us a valuable insights on market trends, regulatory landscape, an effective strategy for entering and succeeding an international market. I encourage each of you to actively engage in the discussions, ask questions, and share your perspectives because collaboration is the key to our collective successes. Moreover, I would like to emphasize the importance of this SME series, 
Today's event is the eighth SME series. We have successfully organized seven editions of this series on various topics like HR, finance, marketing, branding, leadership, development, lean manufacturing, family business under the banner of Dr. Jamin Vasa, AMA, MSME Development Center at Ahmedabad. Dear friends, I will it's my, express my gratitude to all the expert panelists, moderator, and Ahmedabad management of the Ahmedabad Management Association for organizing such a wonderful and important series. Dear friends, lastly, I urge all of you to keep an open mind, embrace these insights, share today, take and take actionable steps toward breaking into the international markets in your own business. Together, we can pave the way for a thriving MSME sector that contributes specifically and significantly to our economy. Thanks for patient hearing. Now, Malvi, the stage is yours now. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay, you can hear. So I'm Mol Sarabhai. I'm also the honorary secretary at AMA. So thank you, Jamin Bhai, and to all the dignitaries for uh, you know welcoming this very exciting uh, uh, talk that or uh, panel discussion that we have. So I will be ans asking some questions, and then there will be a question and answers that we will like to. So I'll open up the discussions up. But before I do that, let's take some <laughs> brief moments before we get down to business, as we say. Let's take some brief moments of what Jamin Bay said. That in terms of amount, there are about four crore MSMEs in India today. That's how much are registered. There might probably are more, but that's how much are registered. Another interesting fact is that 45% of India's total exports are handled by MSME companies. So this is a huge opportunity for MSMEs to you know, really capture the market moving forward. I myself, as Jamin B mentioned, I'm owner and I'm working as an MD of various MSME companies. And I will start off by saying that one of the first things, we are, we are into healthcare and we get a lot of products manufactured outside into other MSME companies. And we are exporters, but one of the first things we find with other companies, with many companies, is that the export part is a bit overwhelming for many people in India today. And it's to do with limited access to finance, very rather complex requirements of export and custom uh, you know, procedures, high logistic costs, exchange rate fluctuations. There are so many of these issues where a lot of companies, although they have a great product and they can be market outside and they can increase it, uh, their revenues, but they fail to do it because of these things. So I thought today would be a good panel. We have an expert team here uh, that we could ask I will post some questions to each one of them, and then perhaps it can help you in asking other questions which I have missed in trying to earn that how do we increase our business size. So getting down to business, first question I would like with Dr. Shah, uh, if I may ask you first since I'm in the room. So Dr. Shah, India is considered the pharmacy of the world. Almost 50% of generics in the US are uh, coming from India. Every third pill, I'm told, that uh, taken by an American citizen today comes from India. So it's a huge achievement for the pharma industry. This is a huge achievement. And it can be do a lot more. So uh, the question is that there are, what are some key strategies that MSME can adopt to enter the highly regulated pharmaceutical export markets? How could you answer that? Dr. So Shah? thank you, Mohal Bhai, and uh, thank you, Jamin Bhai, for having me here. And it's a uh, matter of pride to be a, a part of this very light panel. Uh, Mohal Bhai, as we all know, uh, the Indian pharmaceutical industry, now we put the pharmaceutical with medtech, we are the fourth largest exporting commodity out of India. And that is the strength of this. Uh, putting pharma and uh, medtech sector together, we are the fourth largest exporting commodity from India. Pharma alone, the exports was approximately $27.9 billion in the last year, growing in excess of 10.5%. Very few industries India has that grows at this pace. But if you actually dissect the, uh, the exports that we do, almost 8.7 billion of exports goes to the US and approximately 5 billion goes to the EU. 
which means 13.7, close to 50% of what we export goes to the highly regulated market. And that is where a major value addition is. Now, typically in pharmaceuticals, uh, there are a lot of uh, non-tariff barriers to be considered. For example, the good manufacturing practices, maturity on your quality management systems, which are very important. So if you are an SME and uh, if you want to tap the regulated markets, the highly regulated markets, I think the first and the most important step is developing a mature quality management system because that is your passport to enter any market. And the kind of expectations that the regulatory agencies have in the rest of the world as compared to the developed world are very different. And uh, you are aware of that. So how do you reach a quality maturity, the quality management system maturity, it's not only just about the quality maturity. The quality management systems, the good manufacturing practices that you have adopted, you have to reach to a level in terms of its maturity before you can start thinking of getting into regulated markets. At the same time, the product portfolio is very diverse because uh, most of the MSMEs today are into the rest of the world, which is Africa, Southeast Asia, uh, uh, the Latin America and all. Now, all these markets are basically branded generic markets. Whereas if you go to US and Europe, which are the highly regulated markets where the great value is, these are all generic markets. So there is no branding of generics in this market. And therefore, the, the easiest strategy is going to be becoming a CMO for an established player. And this is how most of the SMEs who want to migrate to the regulated world do. So the first step would be how do you become a CMO for the regulated markets? Because the moment you want to become an AMA holder for these markets, first thing is you need to have very deep pockets because huge money is involved. Right from, for example, for US, the GADUFA fees to your site registration fees, or if it is EU, your AMA holding cost with uh, you know setup of pharmacovigilance and QP, these are all very expensive things. So before going there, <coughs> develop maturity in quality management systems, develop good doziers, especially when you're going to markets like US and Europe, you cannot bank on the common uh, products that you have. If you have to get value, either pick up, uh, uh, in, in the words of uh, Dilip Bhai Sangvi, the, uh, the MD of Sun Pharma, who are the largest players in India, these markets are more of luck because if you get a dozier, if you get a product registration where there are minimal number of players, you can actually multiply your money. So it's not about new molecules or old molecules. People have made money in, in very old molecules like oxytetracycline, for example, or you know things like nitrofurantoin where in, in, a, in, a, in an uh, ROW there would be no value addition. So picking up molecules either where there are very few players or those ones, or the ones that are going to get off patent in the next year or two. These are some of the uh, molecules that will give you a quick entry and a good value. So I think maturity in quality management systems, deep pockets, and selecting the right doziers and developing them with very nice, very perfect, diligent science are some of the key strategies that uh, SMEs should use. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Shah. Another question that comes up from that sort of discussion as a, as a follow-up that are there any schemes um, that I know that we have heard of these schemes for bulk drug parks or API parks or for medical devices that are parks that are coming up. And can you explain or elaborate a little bit of your understanding on this and how other companies, as you said, a lot of times people do need deep pockets. That may be a challenge for some companies, may not have it, but still want to export. Talk a little bit on opportunities perhaps for the, let's say, a, a, a lower ROW markets that people talk about that might be a little easier, but also talk a little bit about these new parks and these schemes that the government comes, if you have any uh, thing to add there, like what advantages are we looking at, you know? So there are a number of schemes that would uh, help entrepreneurs achieve their uh, dreams. Uh, of course, the most uh, common and talked about is the PLI, the product like incentive schemes. And uh, basically is that it addresses the gap uh, in the API sector because during COVID we realized that we had a lot of dependence on certain uh, countries to source our APIs. So 
the government came out with a PLI scheme specifically to incentivize manufacturing of APIs. And if there are entrepreneurs who want to invest in this space, uh, the government has identified uh, around 45 key starting materials in APIs. And if you invest in them, there is a subsidy of 10% for uh, the APIs or KSMs that are manufactured to synthetic route and 20% for those who are manufactured to the fermentation route. So that is a, a very important incentive for the APIs. There is also a PLI2 which specifically incentivizes uh, the other gap that we have in our value chain which is the biologics, which is the complex generics, excipients, which again India is dependent on, um, uh, on, on external sources, mostly in the Europe and China for uh, these kind of uh, excipients and biologics. So again, they have identified certain six moonshot areas and if you're in, uh, investing in those areas, uh, there are a lot of subsidies that come out. Again, uh, there is another scheme for the uh, mostly targeted to the SMEs, which is the PTUS and uh, that addresses the need of GMP upgradation. You must be aware that uh, the re a new Schedule M has been uh, uh, announced which upgrades the GMP manufacturing uh, minimum standards in India and the PTUS helps the SMEs to a tune of approximately 2 crores per unit to upgrade their systems to the, the new GMP. So these are some of the incentives. There is also another very interesting incentive which is called the PRIP which is the promotion of research in pharmaceutical and medtech sector where uh, uh, it's open for the startups, for the SMEs as well as the large companies, if you have an idea, uh, the government is there to support that idea, give you an incentive to, uh, to work on your idea. If the idea gets successful, it, it, it is taken further by large companies to do the phase one, phase two, phase three clinical trials, and then further for a global launch and patenting. And in all, in, in the entire journey, the government is a part of supporting at every stage. If it gets successful commercially, government becomes your partner for that particular research product. If it doesn't get successful, government bears the loss. There's also another very interesting incentive scheme. The overall purpose of everything is because post-pandemic, we have realized that India is gaining center stage as far as the healthcare products are concerned. And a lot of supply chain is being transferred from other countries to India. And there is a possibility that we can scale up this industry to a from 50 billion what it is today to 500 billion. We can have a 10 times scale up in the next 25 years subject to our adding the missing elements in the supply chain and also fo focusing on the value added products, especially in the biologics. And if with this target in mind, all these incentive schemes have come up and uh, if the industry can actually capitalize on it. I can tell you that what we have achieve, achieved from one billion, the first billion pharma industry achieved was in 1986. Yeah. From 86 till today, we have come from one to 50. From here to 2047, we can go from 50 to 500 with, uh, with, uh, with the entrepreneurial effort supported by the government incentives. Thank you very much. That was very, very informative. <laughs> and we hope that these numbers are, are true. We are all working to it. My next question is to Mr. Nair. Uh, Mr. Nair, one of the main challenges for MSMEs is financing export operations. Uh, we discussed, we, we heard that uh, a lot. Could you talk about the role of financial institutions and export credit agencies in helping MSMEs manage their export business? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I thank you, Dr. Uh, Jamin Vasa, MSME Development Center, for inviting me to today's uh, panel discussion. So before we going to that, uh, we should understand that what is engineering products. Baki sector is an engineering product. Because koi bhi product mein metal a gaya, that is engineering product. <laughs> it means uh, manufacturing from pin to aeroplane. Everything is come under this uh, engineering product. So MSME are often called as a backbone of the industry. So EPC have more than 13,000 members. So out of that, 60 persons are from MSME sector. So today's subject is how export opportunity for MSMEs, how we can support to MSMEs for export. So mainly, I'm just uh, telling you about that. If you are become member of EPC, 
with a small uh, membership fee. Within an year, you will get up to 10 lakh rupees support from EPC. Become just a member of EPC. Export kaisa badana hai aapko? If you are in the domestic market, you will not get any export. You have to visit international exhibitions. For that, EPC already giving under MA scheme to and fro airfare. And you will be also giving, uh, getting a subsidized price for the participation in the exhibition. If you are directly participating in an international exhibition, if it is cost around 5 lakh rupees, through EPC, it will be only 60% only. So that is the main financial support for the MSMEs. In addition to that, EPC is exactly what uh, supporting to the MSME. I will give you 10 points. You can understand that. That we are organizing exhibitions and trade fairs. So you can participate in that. We are also organizing B2B meetings. So EPC in the EPC India facilitating networking opportunities with uh, overseas buyers. Market research and information. We are researching the market where your business can be, you know, uh, improved or uh, you can get a good export opportunities. And we are also giving a training and seminars also. These are the main export uh, opportunities EPC is organizing. Then export related uh, certification support is also EPC giving. Government policy support, in case any problem uh, uh, with uh, MSME uh, members, they can directly contact EEPC because it is a trade promotion council. Another thing is representation in policy discussions. Whenever there is any issues are there, you can inform EEPC. Then subsidize for export promotions also. Technology upgradation support. And EEPC India having is more than 60% MSME members. So it is a, an organization that to promote the exporters. This is the main thing. Excellent. <laughs> Mr. Nair, which emerging markets should Indian MSMEs be looking at for future export growth? Are there any untapped regions that MSME should focus on? We want like a general idea. What yeah, do you yeah. think? Actually, we have already identified around 25 countries for export. In addition to that, there are other markets are also available. We export more than the U.S., Europe, all countries we export more than the U.S. Where there is availability, that list I can provide you separately, in case, uh, if you require. So, which are the market we can tap. Because there are a lot of, more than 195 countries are there. So, we have more than 25 markets that we don't have to look at. We have to look at the U.S. and we have to look at the U.S. But we have not tapped on the rest of the places. That you can get it. We can send it to you. You can send that. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Lokesh, uh, with many new policies coming in from the government, could you highlight a few recent initiatives that MSMEs can leverage to grow their exports? Uh, first of all, I thank uh, the organization for uh, giving a representation to us here and to interact with you. This is, uh, I think, my second interaction with the exporters or uh, manufacturers in this region. I have recently joined as additional DGFT uh, Ahmedabad office. DGFT, mm, I, do, I do not know if, uh, uh, how many of you know about DGFT? Can I get a fair idea? Okay. I would so advise, please explain a little bit. <laughs> so the DGFT has, uh, uh, Jaiminji said, uh, it's the primary organization one gets to interact before making exports. The basic document which one has to obtain before he gets or before he does exports or imports is an importer exporter code. So your journey starts from there with uh, DGFT. So DGFT as earlier we were called as the controller of exports. Now our role has changed. We have become a facilitator. Uh, gone is the era of control regime. As you said, in from 1991, we have got into liberalization. So our objective is to promote exports. 
for promoting exports, we need both. Working on the uh, demand side <coughs> as well as the supply side. And we also have to strengthen you and your activities for you to get into better uh, export markets. For that purpose, we are also facilitating imports. We, you need quality imports. So that is uh, our objective. In achieving our objectives, we do majorly three type of activities. One is trade promotion, the next is uh, trade facilitation, and the third one is trade regulation. Trade regulation, you might have heard in uh, papers or news. We come out with uh, regulations on uh, exports or imports. So maybe onion, rice, steel. We introduce some benchmarks for uh, imports of steel. These are to give you better uh, inputs, quality inputs, so that your products become of uh, good quality and you get a better price. So that is part of regulation. In the under regulation, we have uh, freely exportable or restricted items and the prohibited items. Restricted is to see what you are exporting, where you are exporting, and you, re you need an authorization to export a uh, restricted item. So that is issued uh, in the online mode. And freely exportable or freely importable items, you do not need any specific authorization. You can trade it uh, freely. 97% of the products are freely tradable as one date. And when coming to the trade promotion activities, we have realized we have uh, got into the numbers about MSMEs and the importance of MSMEs in the nation's growth as well as exports. So how do we uh, support MSMEs? How, do, how does DGFT support MSMEs in their export endeavors? We have a program called uh, Developing Districts as Export Hub Initiative. This is, uh, we, d we drew inspiration from Honorable Prime Minister's uh, vision. He said that each district has its own potential. If we properly identify those potentials and nurture it, each of the districts can become a self-sustaining export hub. What do we do in this program? We have set up district export promotion committees. In these committees, we have representation from all the stakeholders uh, relating to exports. We have the sectoral export promotion councils like uh, EEPC. We have the state government uh, district industry center. We have representation from customs. We have representation from MSME department. And we also have representation from the industry. Because industry's requirements differ. A new exporter might have a different set of needs. And the established exporter might have a different set of needs. We collectively sit and discuss and we also have come up with with the district export action plan for more than 700 districts in the country and the district export plan will be our roadmap for future what do we do here here we collectively go to the doorsteps of the doorsteps in the sense we reach out to your we reach out to the clusters we reach out to the uh, major production areas and we conduct knowledge sharing programs we bring information to your doorsteps in a collective form. So <coughs> we identify your, your needs. If you have any specific requirements, we arrange programs for those also. And that was about the district export hub initiative. Then we also have e-commerce initiative where we want to connect all possible this MSME uh, units to the global platform. So we want to showcase your products. Here is an opportunity in e-commerce initiative where we have, we have partnered with the postal department. There are dark Nirat Kendras. It, it operates on uh, uh, hub and uh, spoke model. All the dark Nirat Kendras across the country, we have connected it to the foreign post offices. This helps you to get connected to the export markets. Uh, that is the other thing. And we also have a SCOMET program. SCOMET program, it's, SCOMET is a product which is regulated, but it gets you high value uh, 
in returns for your exports. Here, these items are dual use items which can be used for industrial use as well as uh, uh, military purposes. So, but this gives you high value returns. So, we are conducting outreach programs at various industrial clusters, clusters about uh, SCOMET program and DGFT initiatives. I think DGFT is one of the organizations which has adopted e-commerce and e-governance e to the maximum possible extent. Earlier we were operating on physical mode. Now all our schemes are administered on online mode. And we are also coming up with self-approval uh, system. We are moving, to moving into the trust-based administration of DGFT measures. DGFT main currently mainly operates four type of schemes. One, the status holder recognition scheme. Here we recognize you based on your exports. And we give you a rating, one star, two star, three star, four star, and five star export houses. For MSMEs, we have given double weightage. For getting into first star export house, it's three million US dollars in current plus previous three years. But for MSMEs, if you are achieving 1.5 million US dollars, you will be automatically eligible for that uh, status recognition. And when you, are when you are undertaking manufacturing activities, you might need raw materials or capital goods for your uh, production activity purposes. Both are available to you with duty exemptions. You need not pay duties, whether the customs duties or the IGST duties. You will be exempt from these duties, but there will be an obligation to export certain value of products. So under these schemes, you obtain an authorization, you export, you realize the amount and come back to us stating that you have fulfilled the obligation. So earlier we used to check whether you have ex made exports, whether you have made the exports of the allowed products, whether you have realized the re requisite amount. And if you didn't export, we used to give you certain extension in period for exports. Now all these have become automated. This extension, this extension of obligation period has been automated. And the closure certificates or the obligation fulfillment certificate, this is also automated. System approves your cases now because we are, this, we are developing it based on certain criteria. So, and if you fulfill that criteria, system approves it and you will get an uh, obligation discharge certificate immediately. And we are also, we are also making policy on this uh, rot tip uh, scheme where the taxes not refunded under any of the existing schemes like the uh, scheme on imports or the drawback scheme. Such type of refunds are given in this uh, rot tape scheme. And earlier units also used to face problems in getting their uh, realization certificates from the bank. Now recently, three months back, we have introduced self-generation of EB EBRCs. Earlier banks used to generate EBRCs. Now the exporter can himself generate EBRCs and we are accepting that. So these are major uh, export initiatives by us. And on September 11th, we have introduced the Trade Connect platform. You all should visit this platform, trade.gov.in. It was launched by Honorable Commerce and uh, Industries Minister. This will be a one-stop solution for all your requirements relating to exports. Here, you get product and country profile and we connect with the sectoral export promotion councils. We are connected with the Indian embassies abroad. Here you can build your profile, you can showcase your products, which is visible to buyer in the foreign countries. And we are also putting, uh, as, as Jaiminji was uh, mentioning about technical barriers and uh, standards which we are required to meet. All these standards for a particular country, if you have identified your product, you can get to know the standards which are applicable in that export product, uh, product uh, uh, in the export market for your identified product. And we also have self-learning videos and we have a provision for raising a query with an export. We have connected, we are connected with the councils, banks and other institutions where your query, you have a specific query, you can post it, it will be uh, responded to you. Please visit this platform. And we are also going forward in this platform. 
we are incorporating trade finance and logistic solutions also in this platform so these are uh, major uh, some of the major initiatives uh, from uh, dgft in recent times this is very very uh, interesting i think we need to have just one seminar just to understand this because if even when we started export i would say if i knew everything you mentioned right now it would have been much easier you know <laughs> so as you rightly said starts with the ic code and another thing he lokesh bhai said is that 97% i think you said of all the products are freely tradable so one quick question i want to have on that that uh, what steps is the government taking to reduce trade barriers for msmes uh, how can we benefit from any free trade agreements is there something on that you can highlight quickly yes nice question we have a large number of uh, free trade agreements and recently also we have conducted uh, we have concluded free trade agreements with uh, dubai and uh, australia but uh, somewhere we all feel that this free trade agreements has not helped but it has helped the partnering country so we are we have identified the markets and uh, where our exporters or msmes can have additional opportunities and negotiations are going on uh, on that front for entering into free trade agreements at the same time to make aware of the concessions available to our exporters opportunities available to our exporters under the existing free trade agreements we do conduct outreach programs on the existing ftas so if there are any requirements on particular ftas we are happy to conduct these programs and make aware of the opportunities under these agreements thank you thank you very much <laughs> so any export of course we need to have the market and how do we enter these international markets so my next question is to manish bhai you one minute uh, one minute huh? friends <laughs> Great. <laughs> so, Kiri Industries has been a significant player in the chemical and dye sector. Manish Bhai is heading it. So Manish Bhai, what are the key challenges and strategies involved in expanding Kiri Industries' presence in international markets? Um, we, as Kiri Industries, we have been quite fortunate over the years to establish ourselves. Uh, through first the backward integration in India and then the forward integration outside India in a, in a simplistic manner. We, we acquired one of the largest, the largest dye company globally and that's how we could have identification as brand. We could reach out to the consumer. We could have access to more than 1600 patents over the years. So with that helped uh, our organization to grow in international market. But if I speak about the industry as a large, uh, we have dyes, intermediates, pigments, all we consider as part of colorant industries. And, and colorant industry in general in India is, is dominated by MSMEs. We have more than 1,500 um, registered manufacturing units at Dye Stuff Manufacturer Association of India, as well as at, at Gujarat Dye Stuff Manufacturers Association. And 70% and of industry's output is today exported. So uh, it, has, it has been an established uh, uh, practice in industry to, for even MSME to become an export uh, dominant unit. And, and the, the, the only one competitor what we see as an industry globally is China because most of these colorants are produced either in India or in China. Over a period of last 20 years, India is also recognized as, as, as a player which can be identified by its, its established, sustainable, good quality products as made in India products. So if you go to any brands and retailers today and see the colors which are being used by their vendors or themselves, they are considered to be, to be acceptable, to be recognizable as products coming from India. Very good. 
So that makes easier for exporters of MSME also to reach out to the market. Manish Bhai, for MSMEs that are going into global markets, is there any advice on partnership and strategic alliance that you can give? We heard that you were acquired one of a very large German company. Right. Um, what would be your advice to the group in terms of partnership and, and alliances for MSMEs to grow in international market especially? Right. I think the, the approach which, uh, which would help MSMEs is to have a cluster approach. And I'll give you a few examples. A cluster approach in the sense we have seen that uh, all the products cannot be produced by all the MSMEs, right? So there are certain products, some, some units are making very good, they have practice for, others are having some other products. So having cluster approach in, 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 in approaching market, in, in reaching out to the market, has helped color industry and that can help other industries also. For example, we try to bring in every international uh, certification agency to India so that every MSME can have uh, their products qualified, approved by the internationally recognized uh, certification agency for their quality. Similarly, when th there were requirements to have registration in Europe, in Turkey, in many other regions, we again approached uh, with a cluster of industry that let us have a uh, number of industries put themselves together, especially MSMEs, and have the registration of molecular, um, uh, any molecule made as a, as a cluster approval, right? So that the cost can be shared at the same time, export can become uh, available for all of them. So those are the cluster approaches, examples, and an MSME to put themselves together in branding the cluster as a branding and number of other initiatives that can be added to uh, to reach out to the to the global market warehousing for example now we have seen recently that 10 15 20 uh, units together are are putting a warehouse in brazil right. warehousing in some other areas so those are the cluster approaches that we have seen benefiting msme as a large thank you Jigar bhai, tamhe jewelry ane a business ma cho. I understand ke handicrafts ne jewelry thodo niche market ke vai. To innovation ane design, e apne international market ma ilko no attention ne hu hai. To e kettu mahatva chhe innovation and design tamari industry ma ane tamhe kai rite e kari shako cho. Sauthi pila to hu aparvekt kari sa Dr. Jamin B. Vasano ane Amdavad Management Association no. जमने आज ना एसएमई ग्रोथ सीरीज आखमा मने इनवाइट करो शे इनोवेशन ने डिजाइन्स आपे वो सुंदर बात करी के कोई पर आपूषण ते ते नहीं अप्रतियोम सुंदरता थी जो बखना है शे पहले के जो आज ये तो कोई पर स्त्री हो है के पुरुष हो है तो आदमी समय में ते ने सुज हो है के वे डिजाइन डिजाइन के वे डिजाइन के जिन्हे� आह टू लाइन थ्री लाइन रोक ही है शे तो ये ना मतलब ये होता है जैसे कि जुना जमाना नहीं बद्दी जाते हैं वहाँ बड़ा फरीवार आदना समय में कंट्रीब्यूशन साथे आ भी रही शे पर विद द न्यू ट्रेडिशंस लेके इनोवेशन नहीं साथे डिजाइन डिजाइन नहीं साथे इनोवेशन बनने एक भी जना पूरक बनी आज डिजाइनो अने आज इनोवेशन तमने बदु सारी ते बाहर आवे शे अने ब्रांड क्रिएशन ज्यादा समय में सबसे अगर तेरो पोषण थाई करो शे तो आ गणिबद्धि वस्तु ये भी चीज़ है जिन्हें कोलाब्रेशन करिए तो आवनारा समय नहीं अंदर इनोवेशन अने जहाँ पे बात करी अने प्रोस्टार मोर्शे तो वैश्विक स्तरे भा� आईएस विस्तृत थी जाए शे जिन्हें मैन्युफैक्चरिंग आजे दस दिवस थी लाई अने बे महीने अलग के साइंट दिवस नो आए शे जे वरना कोई देश में आटलो होतो नथी तो वी प्राउड एस इंडियन के आपने जुलेरी आवना समय नहीं अंदर को बच प्रिविलेज साथे जशे जी कभी लक्जरी मार्केट में जारे बाहर जाइए तेरे अपनी ऑथेंटिसिटी सोचे ब्रांड रिकॉग्निशन सोचे ज्वेलरी नहीं बात करूं जो प्राइसिंग सोचे 
એ બધાની ઘણી બધી ચર્ચા થતી હોય છે કે અને ઘણા બધા એવા આઈ મીન ઇન્સિડન્ટ્સ બી થયા છે જેમાં આપણું થોડું ક્વેશ્ચન આવે આ ઇન્ડસ્ટ્રીમાં તો એમએસએમઈઝ આ આ ત્રણ બાજા છે સ્પેશિયલી પ્રાઇસિંગ ઓથેન્ટિસિટી બ્રેન્ડ રિકોગ્નિશન એ ચેલેન્જીસ ઓવરકમ કરવા શું કરવું જોઈએ તમારા પ્રમાણે સૌથી પહેલાં તો બ્રાન્ડિંગ ઇઝ અ પાર્ટ ઓફ બિઝનેસ ના વાડીઝ પહેલાં જમાનામાં કેવું હતું કે આપણે દસ વર્ષ જૂની વીસ વર્ષ જૂની પેઢી હતી સો વર્ષ જૂની એક ટેક મળતા હતા કે અમારી પેઢી સો વર્ષ જૂની છે એક બ્રાન્ડિંગ કરતા હતા ઓથેન્ટિસિટીની વાત કરીએ તો ભારત દેશની અંદર બે હજાર ને વીસમાં ભારતે એચ ઓ આઈ ડી જેને કહેવાય વર્લ્ડ લેવલ ઉપર હોલમાર્ક યુનિક આઈડેન્ટિફિકેશન નંબર સાથે બીએસની સ્થાપના કરવામાં આવી છે કે કોઈ પણ જ્વેલર્સ દ્વારા જો શોરૂમ ખોલવામાં આવશે તો તેને બીએસ એપ્રુવડ જ કરવું પડશે એટલે કે પ્રિયોરિટીની વાત કરીએ તો જે કમ્પ્લેન્સ જૂની આવતી હતી એ થોડીક ગેરસમજ હતી માટે આવતી હતી જે હવે ઓપન થઈ ગઈ છે આપણે ઇન્ટરનેટ ઉપર સર્ચ કરીએ છીએ તો આપણને ખબર પડે છે નવ કેરેટ ચૌદ કેરેટ બાવીસ કેરેટ અઢાર કેરેટ કે ચોવીસ કેરેટ શું છે તો તમને ડિટેલ્સ એની મળી જશે હોલમાર્ક કમ્પલ કમ્પલસરી થવાથી આપણી બ્રાન્ડિંગમાં ઘણો વધારો થયો છે અને વિવિધ દેશોની અંદર પણ જોવા જઈએ તો આપણી ક્વોલિટી હવે પહેલાં કરતાં ઘણી સારી લોકો વખાણી રહ્યા છે એટલે ઓવરઓલ જોવા જઈએ તો ફ્યુચર બ્રાન્ડિંગ માટે ઘણો સારો બિઝનેસ હું અને ગણું છું સાથે સાથે સાહેબે હમણાં વાત કરી તમે જાણો છો લોકેશભાઈએ કે ગવર્મેન્ટ દ્વારા હમણાં ગિફ્ટ સિટીની અંદર જે યુએ સાથે વન પર્સન્ટ સેપાનો એક પ્રોગ્રામ કરવામાં આવ્યો હતો એની અંદર મેન્યુફેક્ચરિંગને દરરોજ અંદાજે પંદરસોથી બે હજાર કિલો સોનું એ લોકોએ વાર્ષિક હમણાં આપણે અહીંયાથી ઇસ્યુ કરવામાં આવ્યું છે જે ગુજરાત અને ખાસ કરીને અમદાવાદ માટે ગૌરવની વાત છે અને તે આખા વિશ્વમાં એ લોકોની ખ્યાતનામાં પામી કે ભાઈ ભારત ગવર્મેન્ટે અહીંયાથી આપણને ઊભું કર્યું છે તો આ ઘણા બધા પ્રોગ્રામ્સ છે અને આપણે જે વાત કરીએ તો ચીપર કોસ્ટ આજે પણ આપણે સમજીએ કે ભારત દેશની અંદર આપણી કોસ્ટ સૌથી ચીપર હોય છે રાત્ર દેન મશીનના જે આપણે દાગીના જોઈએ એના કરતાં ઘણું ચીપર કોસ્ટ હોય છે જે હેલ્પ કરે છે આપણી ગુણવત્તાને વધુ સારું કરવામાં ડિઝાઇન્સ ક્રિએટિવિટી જોવા જઈએ તો ડિઝાઇન્સ ક્રિએટિવિટી હાઈએસ્ટ આપણી પાસે અત્યારે જોવા મળે છે અને ટેકનોલોજી જેને કહેવાય આજના જમાનામાં સૌ ટેકનો સેવી માણસો છીએ એઆઈનો ઉપયોગ આજે હાલમાં અમે જોલસ કરતાં થઈ ગયા છે તો ઘણી બધી વસ્તુ એવી છે કે ટેકનો સેવી થવું પોતાની બ્રાન્ડ માટે આગળ વધવું અને ભવિષ્યમાં વૈશ્વિક સ્તરે જે આપણી સ્થાપના નોંધ લેવી છે તેને વધુ સારી રીતે ઉજાગર કરવી તે માટે અમે પ્રયત્ન કરી રહ્યા છે હવે લુકિંગ એટ ધ ટાઈમ ઓડિયન્સમાંથી આઈ વુડ લાઈક ટુ આસ્ક ઇફ એનીબડી હેઝ સમ ક્વેશ્ચન્સ ટુ ધીઝ એક્સપર્ટ પેનલ પ્લીઝ રેઝ યોર હેન્ડ્સ એન્ડ વી કેન ગો વન બાય વન થેન્ક યુ Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Right. My name is Mr. Jitu Patel. I am from Daffodil and I am the, actually the smaller, smaller or rather I think much smaller than Mr. Shah who has been performing much on pharma industries like now. I have one question to Mr. Shah. Like we were talking about the regulatory market for Europe, US which has been mainly covered in pharma markets for the majority of our shares are going with this regulatory market. How about non-regulatory market? How to patch up the non-regulatory markets? that's my one of the questions to you so thank you jitu bhai and it's a pleasure meeting you uh, yeah. as i said out of the overall exports that we do 50% goes to the regulated markets which is predominantly us and europe but there is another 50% that is the non uh, non regulated market may not be the right term but it is uh we could put it as a, a less regulated market so it's not a stringent market it's a less regulated market but essentially for success of pharmaceuticals we all understand that because this deals with healthcare the first the, the barriers remain the same the challenges remain the same the first and the most important part is your gmp maturity so if you have quality systems that are mature which because most of these markets have their own inspection system once you apply they will come and audit your plant give you deficiencies once you do a kappa they allow you to enter the market so quality maturity is quality system maturity is very important whether you are into regulated markets or you are into not so regulated markets and that they offer a huge growth in fact most of the companies 
uh, including the largest ones, they are now focusing into emerging markets. What a lot of non less regulated markets, there are uh, they are emerging markets, and they offer a great value because one that the GAP expectancy uh, expectations are relatively moderate. Two, there is a possibility to brand your products. And the moment you have the ability to brand your products, there, there is a value that you could add. You can have your own teams uh, similar to what you have in India to promote your products and brands, uh, which gives you an additional incentive to perform in the, these markets. So I think uh, the regulated markets are important, but the less regulated markets, the ROWs that we call the rest of the world, is, is, is a very, very potential market. Today, we supply medicines to almost all the countries in the world, of approximately 200 plus countries we are supplying medicines. And the kind of changes that are happening globally, India is going to play an important role in supplying medicines to the poorest to the richest countries in the world. And nobody has, apart from India, has a capability to do what we are doing today. So I think there is a definitely a big market also for the ROWs. Thank you, Vignesh Bhai. Anyone else? Uh, there is a person. My question is to Lokesh, sir. Might be differs. Uh, Vikas Makwana from Ministry of Rural Development Department. We have rural women who are into manufacturing of the items made from bamboo, bamboo and great craft making, right? The website you have told, tradegoe.in, how that website will be integrated to this rural woman so they can have the better opportunity and uh, whatever the government vision is there for the sustainable livelihoods that can be achieved. Trade.gov.in it was launched on September 11th and it is uh, in a development stage and uh, now we don't have all the services going forward we will be integrated with this uh, e-commerce platforms we have already signed MOUs with Amazon uh, global selling program we do conduct this e-commerce outreach programs handhold them to get on board to those uh, selling platforms so th that way we can help them. If they want a specific pro program, we can, you can organize, we will come and we will help them on onboard into that platform. And we also set an ambitious target. This year we want to onboard more than 10,000 e-commerce exporters into these uh, sites. So that their product will be, they get more visibility. If they get visibility, then that will translate into trades. So that is our objective. And how to check the website and the no, you can talk to us. You contact us. When do you want to have the program? We will come to you and conduct this program. We will be very happy. We have a manual action plan. Let's not have it live. OK. So you can share it with you. Please. And then that because this will be very helpful for this, as you said, the women uh, groups or the people who are into handicrafts, handlooms, yes. because they, are, they don't have that capacity to build a brand or an enterprise or to uh, visit international exhibitions, buyer-seller meets, they, don't, they might not have that capacity because they are still in developing stage. So we should go out, reach out to them and help them to get better visibility. We will be very happy to associate with you. There's one more question. India has no competition in India. Because where it is from Gujarat, there is Gujarat. It is one of our values. And where it is from India, there is our Bharatiya Sanskriti. 
એટલે કે આપણી સંસ્કૃતિ મુજબ આપણે જે દાગીનાનો મોહ હાથ વણાટનો રાખીએ છીએ તે આપણા દ્વારા વર્લ્ડ લેવલ ઉપર જ્યાં જ્યાં ભારતીયો વસે છે તેને ખરીદવામાં આવે છે દરેક દેશની અંદર આજે આપણે ત્યાં વિવિધ પ્રકારના શોરૂમ્સ પણ હવે ખોલવા માંડ્યા છે બુટિક્સ પણ ખોલવા માંડ્યા છે જે લોકો ભારતમાંથી દાગીના મંગાવીને ત્યાં બિઝનેસ કરતા હોય છે યુએસની સિસ્ટમની વાત કરીએ આજે તો યુએસ સિસ્ટમ થોડી ડિફરન્ટ છે એની સાથે યુરોપની અંદર કારણ કે મેક્સિમમ ડાયમંડનું કામ જેમ લેબ્રોન ડાયમંડ અને નેચરલ ડાયમંડ આજે લેબ્રોન ડાયમંડનું કામ ઘણું અત્યારે યુએસમાં વધવા પામ્યું છે પણ એનો મેક્સિમમ ડિઝાઇનિંગ વર્ક આપણને જણાવતા આનંદ થાય કે સુરતમાં આપણા થઈ રહ્યું છે તો ભવિષ્યમાં બિઝનેસ ગ્રો કરવો હોય ઇન્ડિયા અથવા આઉટસાઇડની અંદર તો હવે પહેલાં કરતાં ઘણી ઇઝી સ્કીમ્સ અવેલેબલ થઈ ગઈ છે થેન્ક યુ એનીબડી એલ્સ In fact, uh, two questions are there. One to Manish Bhai. You said, Manish Bhai, that our biggest competitor is China. For other color and toy, no other product. I think mostly it is because of the economy of scale and research and development. Can we think of something like a cluster of MSMEs who can manufacture the product whereby we can become up uh, so if we produce in bulk we can buy in bulk our rm cost is also less you something cannot be thought of that we can produce the material in a cluster uh, these, way th- these two are the the main factors why uh, why we have been trying to compete and beat uh, the competition coming out from china one of the major factor of economy of scale we see now in in many sectors are getting addressed the reason why it is getting addressed is india's own consumption our own requirements look at our future projections of what we are going to consume in india has also grown significantly we are the largest consumer right so if you look at the economy of scale which china has adopted almost 10 15 20 years ago we are at a stage we can do today right it requires a large uh, capital investment which is also coming to india um, so 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 that you know that problem can be addressed today by putting up the world scale uh, facilities world scale businesses in india in many sectors not only chemicals um, that's one area second we are extremely extremely lacking behind in r&d and innovation that is the biggest problem today for every new product we have to either import technology we have to collaborate with someone we have to buy technology to bring to india and that could be for uh, you know a lower quantum chemicals as well as i have seen even for large scale products still we don't have technology um our our expense on r&d now china has reached to almost 2 and half to 3% of their gdp 4. correct 5. now maybe 4.5, 4.5 the new new projection yeah. we are we are way behind in spending in r&d in getting innovation so cluster approach is another area where we can work msmes can put themselves together associations can also play a bigger role and try to come up with the, the you know the critical mass that requires for for effective research right and we need to put that together another area which we need is the is a skill development which goes along with research and development right i give an example um 2010 11 when we acquired this german mnc which you just mentioned we uh, you know we we had almost more than 100 people more than 100 people working in r&d in in germany okay we requested them to move to singapore because we shifted everything to singapore they didn't agree to none of them was prepared to go to singapore forget india right and and that intellect uh, the years of experience in research right that remained there is still remained there we ended up sending 25 50 people to germany to learn from them come back here set up the research and development here but it it's very difficult process 
one has to go through to bring actual research to India rather than reverse engineering to, to, to India. Mm -hmm. So that's an area where, where everyone needs to work, including MSMEs. Last thing, half question. I would like to introduce and ah. add one point. Because we were talking about cluster-based approach. So we have a concept called Towns of Export Excellence. And here, this recognition is uh, granted on achieving certain limit of exports for that particular sector. For this, in this sector, if there are any common service providers, these common service providers, they are also eligible for duty exemption on capital goods required for uh, providing these common uh, services. So there is a uh, benefit for such invest common service uh, providers also in this. Miranji, we question which I have been asking you and all this. Most of the export of pharmaceuticals to the regulated market like US and Europe and are being by the big industries. Why we cannot think by IDMA or so to educate the SMEs or help SMEs to develop their business so that or develop their infrastructure or regulatories so that they can also export to these regulatory markets. So Jamin, it is always good to be a part of the regulated world. But as I said initially, there are certain uh, minimum maturity in terms of the quality management systems, your monetary involvement. There are a lot of barriers to these markets. So I would rather suggest that start with the low end markets, which are easily accessible. Your, your normal WHO GMP uh, you know, is, is enough to enter those markets. They are already exporting to those non-regulatory markets or ROD markets. I want that why, how we can make MSMEs eligible at a reasonable cost to the export to the regulatory markets. Some, uh, you can as a being IDMA president, national president, not now, but you can just think of it actually. It's definitely a very good idea and we are regularly engaging with USFDA and the UDRA uh, both within India and uh, in their respective countries to increase the, uh, in, uh, the participation of uh, the Indian pharma industry. For example, we had uh, uh, a visit for, uh, by Dr. Robert Calip, who is the commissioner of FDA, uh, USFDA, and he was in his first ever visit to India last year. And uh, one of the requests we made was, can USFDA consider giving significant uh, concessions to Indian SMEs uh, in their uh, site registration fees, in the GADUFA fees, in, uh, and uh, would it be possible? And one of the models that we have proposed, for example, is that subsequent to a USFDA audit, for example, site has no observations, there are no 483s. Can you, and it is an SME, can you reduce the cost for the subsequent three years to 25% from the original? So if you're paying $100, can you make it $25 to incentivize because they have done a wonderful work? Or if there are minor observations, if 483s are limited, then it could it be 50%? So because it's, it's mo first entry barrier for MSMEs is the cost of uh, getting. Just to put one product in US will cost you at least three crore, two to three crore rupees per year as, as a basic money that you will have to put apart from the money you, that you invest as a fee, apart from the money that you invest in the in the dozier and in your plant. So that we are definitely working towards it. But again, my advice is apart from the regulated world, there is also a very big world. I, I'm giving you one example. India is the largest manufacturer of uh, opium and opium derivatives. Right, the legal manufacturer. I mean, there would be countries who are doing otherwise. Now, for all these years, have we utilized some research to come out with a derivative that would be less addictive or more uh, potential in terms of the medicinal effect? Can we use it to project India? We are the largest manufacturer, for example, Isabgul. Do we do any research on Isabgul? None of the universities do that. So rather than Yes, of course, it is always good to go to the evolved market and regulated market. But then there is a big world outside it. We have chicken goon in India, which probably Europe does not have. Can we work and find out solutions for chicken goon? Yeah? And so some form of value-added and innovative products is basically very important 
for the pharmaceutical industry going forward. And if we take that trend, probably uh, the SMEs would reach much higher heights than they would actually go to a regulated market. I think that that, that innovative uh, space is going to be uh, probably the next big thing happening to India Pharma. And therefore, uh, in, in Pharma Jaga, we say that it is about air, AIR, academics, industry and regulators. So if the air comes together and we can bring the air of innovation in India, I think it's much bigger space than going to US or Europe. Thank you. Uh, may I request Malvi to give a small concluding remarks and vote of thanks. Thank you, Malvi. So thank you all the panelists for sharing your expertise and insights today. This was a really great, uh, fascinating discussion. This can go on, Jamin Bay. So please organize more such, uh, you know, uh, discussions at EMA. Um, for a lot of you to explore other export opportunities, I want to encourage you to connect with EMA because EMA has many other resources available. Uh, more in detail or more in micro detail of what the other discussions we have had today. So I know today we have sort of gone a little bit over time, but I thank you all for coming and making this a great panel discussion. Thank you very much.